we also have to mention this issue regarding Hoare, um, the amazing or once amazing Berlin um, DJ live streaming platform that kind of rose to prominence during the pandemic has been facing some backlash regarding um, their stance on the stuff that's going on right now in Gaza and just generally how they basically, you know, it seems like silencing um, certain voices, especially considering the stances that they have here. It says here, Hoare issues a statement following online backlash and calls for a boycott. Um, the platform platform Hall is accused of centering pro-Palestinian clothing worn by two performers. So, a uh, Berlin streaming platform Hall has responded to criticism online, including calls for boycotting to remove archive sets. Hall's latest statement has um, was sent yesterday, November the 5th, to all artists in the database, which is not true. Um, according to a few people I've, I've, I've been checking out on social media, um, it seems like not everybody got it. I'm not too sure if they did that on purpose <laughs> or if it's just like a glitch on their side of things with their um, send grid or whatever it is, mail chip that they use. But it seems like not everybody got it. And many artists who have played there three or four times said they've never received the email. So I'm not too sure if they purposely hid it or sent it to a small group of people hoping that no one read it. I'm not really too sure, but obviously people did and they put it out there. Um, according to Hall, no small number of artists missing and we are doing the best I can to collect the artists. In the email, which Resident Advisor has seen, um, Hall's two Israeli founders. Again, that's what I've said before. I find it really interesting how many people from Israel are involved in the dance music scene. Don't you find that very interesting, especially within like what you call quote quote powerful positions um it really is quite interesting to see like such a small area of the world has such a a big kind of like i guess influence on a lot of areas in dance music so i guess it puts them in awkward position because obviously a lot of people out there are mostly identifying with the plight of the palestinians and if you're an israeli person there you're probably going to feel a little bit aggrieved that you've got people coming up in your platform and lambasting your country and shit i understand the side of things what's going on there but i think the issue that they have or the issue that the problem that they what they're doing wrong in my opinion is the silencing of people and telling them to remove certain pieces of clothing that shit that's out of that's completely out of line in my personal opinion if you're going to be a political platform uh, which they have been in the past you have to just allow people to say what the fuck they want to say you say what you, you want to say let people say what they want to say they kind of let the chips fall as they may but silencing people and shit is not on in my personal opinion um they said um, founders clarified a position after allegations surfaced online from two artists who said they've been asked to cancel their performance or remove clothing that showed support for Palestine. The instances took place in Copenhagen in Berlin last Friday, November third, and in Copenhagen, local artist um, instances took place in Copenhagen and Berlin. Okay, cool. So I think so. I'd assume maybe during the maybe during the marches that was happening in Berlin, maybe some maybe some of the procession went outside and protested outside the hall studio because it's pretty much on a you know a bit of a main road so that might have been what happened and obviously maybe something went down there i'm not really too sure but yeah that's really unfortunate um in copenhagen local artist t was asked to remove their scarf while later in berlin sam clark said that his set was stopped midway through um due to his t-shirt which showed a palestinian flag and the word palestine written in arabic um so let's see if i can actually find the actual original statement because the original statement is really interesting to read because it kind of paints a completely different picture as to what actually happened there. Let me see if I can find it. Bear with me a second there while I kind of pull it up here. Okay, so I've managed to find a post where um, somebody on Twitter posted actually the full statement or the full response that Hall put out there that they sent to only a small group of people in their contact list. This is from an account on Twitter called Next Dimensional um, on Twitter and they posted the following Horst just sent out a long email so let me read the whole email I'm for so we can get a full scope on what their stance is and what they've said because some people have really agreed to the response so the this is a statement Horst put out there say and this was sent to all DJs allegedly but you know people are uh, alleging that they didn't receive it due to recent events at our studio and posts on social media we went to reach out to you directly to kind of our petition yeah that's something I realized too by the way before I continue I actually checked their Instagram they haven't updated it in a long time um, I was actually wondering what was going on because this is something obviously inside baseball you have to be really kind of you have to care about this shit to know all this sort of stuff right i'm obviously a little bit in the weeds a little bit in the scene and stuff a little bit you know neurotic when it comes to this sort of stuff but i noticed for just on the outside in that they hadn't updated a lot of their streams they didn't post too much on social media things kind of seem to be a bit quiet in terms of the output and it kind of makes sense now and if you check their instagram i think they've turned off comments on nearly all their posts i think you have to go back to kind of maybe a few months back to see a, a post that has comments open so clearly they've had an issue um with their response to um the com the, the, you know the, the current conflict and they haven't really been able to i guess address or appease some of the concerns of the community out there so let's continue reading it 
We have been appalled by the events that have taken place in Palestine and Israel. Our hearts have been broken by all the innocent victims. We hope an immediate an end to violence and relief for the Palestinian people from its humanitarian crisis, as well as for the safe return of the Israeli hostages. We wholeheartedly support the right of Palestinian people to self-determination and freedom. We take our responsibility to create a safe space where artists can share their responses to the devastating events seriously. We have seen many artists using our platform to show solidarity with Palestinian people by wearing t-shirts, scarves and flags. We believe in freedom of expression and we have not and will not censor flags or peaceful slogans. It continues. However, there are symbols that for some audiences are controversial, which will not allow. And again, this is where it gets touchy because what is controversial how do you judge that that's why you have to let everything go or you let nothing go but you can't do this in between thing right this is like select this is definition of selective politicking the next uh slide here i'll show you the next bit of the email it says um on Friday, we had two instances where individuals wanted to demonstrate solidarity with Palestinian people, but our content moderation team felt that their items of clothing would be perceived as offensive and were calling for the eradication of Israel. This is what I don't like. I don't like that they are palming off the blame to their content moderation team. Just say, as two Israeli citizens, whatever it may be, we just felt uncomfortable having that sort of stuff on our platform. You can say that, even though they're, you know, it's been alleged the two founders of Hora, two former IDF soldiers, I'm not really too sure the validity of that claim, but I think you're, you're, you're within your right to say, as Israelis, we felt uncomfortable platforming these images that called for the eradication of our country. You can say that. Even whatever you get, and that's the thing I've realized, people are just afraid of the blowback they're going to get for the stuff that they say you can say what you want to say but you just have to let the other side say what they want to say to you back in reply you can't then just like be uncomfortable then delete comments or then kind of close comments. it's just such a pussy way to go about things like if you're going to get into the fray if you're going to get into the frying pan get into the frying pan don't just kind of dipping your toe and running away type of shit um and again the content moderation team thing is really um lame because essentially they're, they're kind of using their employees basically as human shields when really it's their issue even if it isn't their issue they should be very presenting it as their issues because they're the leads and they're the founders so that's something i don't like it continues um in one instance an artist wore a scarf with the phrase the land is ours written in arabic while in another instance another artist wore a shirt featuring a palestinian flag superimposed over a map of israel it is never our intention to upset any of our artists but keeping our platform as respectful space is very important so of course but that isn't considering what the conflict is about and considering the nature of the debate that that falls in completely in line with what's currently going on so i don't really see why you can say these things but then you can't display them on the t-shirt it's like what like come on bro um because basically if you're if, if you're it, essentially if you're being pro if you're pro-palestine you're essentially espousing some of the beliefs that have been written on a t-shirt or this i mean that's basically what you're basically saying so i don't really see they don't have a leg to stand on really with this argument this is kind of bullshit these are just excuses we also have known of stories who's talking about a platform which we want to directly address number one there have been questions about some social media posts shared by us, the founders of Hor after October the 7th. As many of you will know, we are originally from Israel, <laughs> which I didn't know. It was like, fuck, bro. Interesting. We and our families were shocked and saddened by the events on October 7th. We personally know people who have died or were kidnapped and are still missing. We deeply regret sharing posts that we did not appreciate fact check after October 7th. Okay, so this is, this is the issue they're having. They try to get involved. They try to kind of advocate for israeli lives they got the facts completely wrong they got demolished in the comments and then they kind of ran away scared that makes more sense what's going on now now i'm kind of getting it we personally duh, 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 duh. Um, we regret the fact check after the 7th and we're sorry that we offended anybody we in no way support the aura um, that has been inflicted on the people of palestine and we have listened to next slide we have listened to we have listened to that with, uh, the, the, we listened to those who have reached out to us in the weeks since educated ourselves in new areas and learned a lot. There was an isolated instances where an artist who was showing us solidarity of Palestine left the booth eight minutes before the set ended. This led our content moderation team to think there was an issue with the set, resulting in putting it on private just to check if it was a problem. When they realized that there was nothing wrong, it was immediately put back online. <sighs> come on bro you couldn't just notice like co this content moderation team how do they not realize somebody left a set eight minutes before the end aren't they there in the studio when it's been recorded or are they kind of off-site are these like are they trying to palm off the responsibility on like remote workers in the philippines or something like this is really egregious man 
the lack of personal accountability that they're responsible for taking is kind of gross. Uh, content moderation team has been mentioned, I feel like, more times than the founders. We're aware of a former vendor who listed his employment on LinkedIn as whore and has been sharing hateful posts. This individual supported us in our website early 2002. We only ever had two or three meetings with them. Unfortunately, we are not aware of the political opinions and they do not represent our views or values. Finally, we understand that some of you feel that hurt by the delay in us setting up our position on the matter. As a platform, we have always tried to be open and transparent. We will learn from this experience. We believe in the importance of freedom expression but you're not really in it you're silencing expression as i'll show you in another post in a minute um it continues here to end it um try to be open and transparent believe in open expression uh we are looking to into training our content but <laughs> again content on this content moderation team is getting all the blame not the found the content moderation team is getting absolutely burnt here they're getting thrown out they're getting literally thrown out of the bus um to ensure that we have uh, clear guidelines for our team and artists to follow. We would like to thank the majority of our artists who have been really respectful um, and engaging in the conversation with us over the recent weeks. We'll continue to listen and work hard to create an environment that is open, respectful. Uh, we would like to have an open dialogue with you, so please do reach out directly to us. They only want it via email. They don't want it publicly on their platform. They only want to, you to reach out to them via email, which is super sus anyway um for us to include we would like to share the thoughts and ideas of your personal to forward our hope is that completely so our hope is that our community comes together at this difficult time and uh folks finds comfort with the values and unites us in creative collective our platform will remain open to anyone looking for an outlet to express themselves via music yeah right didn't reply to my email did you back in the day anyways um with that being said, we've got another post here, courtesy of another artist. If I can, no, this is actually the one where it's kind of depicting all the stuff that's been taken out. So this is courtesy of a user called on Twitter called Rival Alt ninety three, and they said just wanted to share some screenshots that that so that we, all of you know to boycott whore. So let's actually see the post here. So the first post details um a Instagram story shared by somebody um called free sam clark and it says so horse stopped my set because they didn't know that my shirt says it and it says it, it says palestine so he's got a shirt here um i guess that's the shape of the country maybe with the palestine written here in arabic and obviously the palestinian flag superimposed into the land there and they were saying that horse stopped my set because they didn't know what it was so obviously they're censoring people telling them to just get off another one says hot hot tea to take off a palestine scarf um and i guess we've got a picture here that shows a palestine scarf here this is t it says um just to reference uh the person's other post earlier this was the scarf that i was wearing and i've been wearing all day they said that the scarf was fine and the flag would be fine too but the map is too controversial <sighs> come on man which i don't really understand why isn't that what this whole thing exactly that's what the whole thing is about like what this is nonsense i can't really say anything that hasn't really been really said i'm not really the victim here but damn if you stand with israel give them your land exactly <laughs> Um, another one says they've got more posts from Sam Clark here, more details. He says the following, I just played my first set at Hall this evening. In the past days, I'd been aware that the owners had taken down and reinstated sets by artists that have shown visible support for Palestine, right? Um, I wore a shirt on my stream that I bought on Solonau in Neuklund that said Palestine in Arabic. I performed 20 minutes of my set before the attendant told me that their bosses instructed them to stop my set because they noticed my shirt and wanted to make sure that it had to say something um, inflammatory they told me that i had that i could have conversation with them about the shirt's meaning and start my set over again or cancel altogether which is incredibly patronizing to be completely fair and insulting and demeaning on all those other words the shirt says palestine it's interesting to me that they wouldn't know um that what it says as the israeli seems a bit basic ultimately i decided i wasn't interested in the conversation and didn't want to start my set over again i'm not really sure what to do about it now but i feel as though whole berlin needs to face the reality unfolding in front of their faces and make a stronger stance against the genocide instead of interfering with basic justice of solidarity stop supporting this radio until it happens exactly that's a that's a main point there it's a basic basic gesture of solidarity if you're not going to be involved in it if you're going to sit on the fence cool but then what you can do is just let your platform be a voice and a platform for people to share their own opinions and stuff that's what you should do and i think that what i'd like to see i guess it wouldn't happen but what i'd like to see if that was the case and you came on that platform as a zionist i'm like you know what i'm gonna be pro i'm gonna be pro israeli to the death and i'm gonna wear my fucking israeli um flag scarf and my israeli flag t-shirt and rep for my people fine 
and be okay with the comments you get back or whatever it may be. But both sides, you know, essentially want to say what they want to say, but also want to control the conversation, it feels like. But what you can't do as a platform is then start censoring people, telling them to take off their top, stopping their, their sets mid-set. That's really abhorrent. And the fact that they, the founders are, you know, throwing the content moderation team under the bus, that says a lot about them, really, to be completely honest. But then... There's an interesting post here, courtesy of another DJ uh, called Juba, who has a very interesting take, and it's almost defense of Hall, which kind of feels a bit funny considering what's going on, but let's actually read her statement here because it did cause a lot of controversy online to the point where she had to private her account because she was getting a lot of kind of, you know, some blowback on there essentially because she was twerking for Hall. So it says the following. It's an 18 post, right? 18 tweets, basically. It's kind of long. Let's read the whole thing. So Hall is the next platform to become the pariah of the music scene again. Sometimes I look at the dog pile culture of the cancellation and i wonder how sustainable this is and what we actually want to be creating music landscape to look like in the future how can we create an industry in spaces where we rightfully hold entities accountable but don't desecrate but but don't um, desecrate the ecosystems that we use whether these types of spaces radio stations or online platforms i'm all for holding platforms accountable and leveling necessary criticism and i really respect when people have genuine conviction in their decisions and truly understand why that governs their behavior behaviors simultaneously one of the reasons i side-eye this culture of online outrage and defamation is because i am convinced and i'll even go as far as to say that i know that the solid percentage of people who join in don't fully believe what they're saying come on you is, is that really your defense some some people are choking out their asses that's okay it's kind of falling off the cliff already um or haven't really interrogated narratives that are reproducing and why they're doing it side note i also think more platforms need to actually interrogate why they do things as they avoid enveloping themselves in unnecessary drama um i think people are afraid that they'll look bad if they don't follow the righteous wave or that their silence will be used against them they know that if they're still on the certain lineups that they'll be criticized and judged either publicly or private group chats then suddenly it's like this it's like shit here's another platform that i can't be associated with here's another gig that i can't play here's another bag fumbled not because i actually want this but because i don't do the right thing it will have failed a virtue signaling test but that so basically she's complaining that her bags are getting <laughs> i love the i love how unashamed this defensive this is affecting my pocket can everybody just get on please can you guys all put down the guns can you put down the missiles can you stop burning kids chopping off their heads and shit can you stop fucking bombing hospitals bombing residential areas civilians um aid workers journalists and stuff can you stop doing that so that we can all go back to playing music it reminds me of that post and i think unfortunately it was from a black girl also it was during the height no during the start of the uh, war in ukraine just as russia started to fucking launch the fucking missiles and shit and hit residential buildings i remember it was also the time that i was actually considering going to kiev like in that same year i was going, I was going to kiev because obviously the clubs there are fucking phenomenal and it kind of happened in the same sort of i think it was around summertime right just before the summer i not be too sure but i remember this post going viral of this girl that was on a kiev i think it was like an expats in kiev telegram or something sincerely also she might have been a trouble to show but she was like oh does this mean we can't party or something like something's like that sincere post like does it mean like what's going on guys like this war does it mean the club's gonna be open on the weekend and people are like bro like they're shelling they're shelling major parts of our capital city of course the clubs are going to be closed what do you think is going to happen this feels like the same sort of thing it's like my bags have been affected can we please you know stop the war <laughs> oh this girl is amazing once again i'm actually um once again if people actually hold convictions i think that's great previously too much bullshit was allowed to run and people acted with impunity platform spaces and um, etc constitute of uh, constitute of humans who make uh, mistakes and be outright problematic and such things could be called out sometimes the situations is actually beyond help more often than not i don't think it is also Often, um, when you have honest in real life conversations, there is a space for more nuanced and moderate readings um, of what's going on online and understanding that there's a physical world where disputes don't need to be concluded with such immediate, indefinite, rigid effect. Yeah, but considering the information that we have available, I mean, there's there's not really much debate about what's going on, really, in it. You can sympathize with both sides of the argument, but in terms of the narrative or in terms of what's actually going on, there's not real much debate, really, in it. That's why it's going to be free Palestine until the end, really. To be honest, 
there's not much debate about what's actually going on. You you can have sympathy and have you know feelings for the people in Israel who have obviously been affected by this negatively, but especially if you just look at the Instagram stories, it's, it's heartbreaking. Especially over the weekend, you you click on the Instagram story locations of certain parts of fucking Gaza and shit, and you just see it's been absolutely flattened. And then you just click on certain parts of Israel, you see people you know drinking and smoking and hanging out, sunbathing on the beach and shit like completely different experiences so hey what do i know continues um there is some space for actually finding resolutions and just te- and not just tearing things down what also happens is that in a few years after the anger has subsided and the perpetrators no longer exist we're like ah it's actually a shame that we went down with radar what yo this girl <laughs> does she know what happened with radar radio it's a shame what went down with Radar Radio. I wish it had been handled differently or Hall was actually a great platform. I kind of miss it. This twerking for these... In my opinion, this is a really odd defense because Radar Radio and all these platforms, even Hall, they're not really that important. They're kind of important because no, basically, what it seems like in dance music, it seems like artists, for the most part, don't like doing the work for themselves, right? They want, like... I feel like there should be way more artists owned clubs in my personal opinion there should be more uh clubs that are owned by a collective of artists where they can all play where they basically you know use it as a ground to maybe test out new talent um to nurture new talent uh just to put on their own parties do it the way that they want to do it they should do the more of that but they don't instead they take the big fee to do the party um to play for an hour or two and they kind of duck out of their private jets but they like to go into ready-made places they like to kind of do the whole plug and play thing i want to play at your venue you have the equipment you do everything and then i just plug and play obviously some go the extra step and kind of have their own production and lightning whatever but the most part most DJs just rock up to a gig with headphones and a usb but they don't really want to do their own thing so i get it so that's why these platforms exist because they provide a platform for an artist to come and plug and play to boost signal boost themselves to reach a newer audience and maybe potentially get more gigs right that's essentially what they're used for they don't really it's not used for anything else it's kind of used as a way to kind of you know let people know what you're about and whatever and i feel like Hall did a really good job more unique than others because at the time that they kind of came about there wasn't really a thriving i can't figure there was another station in berlin at the time i think it closed just before horse started actually i forgot what the streaming site was but there was a lot of platforms that were like berlin based that were you know showcasing a platform with a lot of the djs there and like you know if you know anything about berlin you know that they take dance music very seriously there they have a prolifera right probably way too many djs for spaces so there's loads of talent there that doesn't really get any recognition so they did um, and you can't say, you know, with a straight face that they were responsible for breaking a lot of artists, right? They actually gave a lot of people a chance and that actually led to them going on to get more bookings and shit. Cool. But um, the platforms aren't necessarily the most important factor. It's still the talent. So if the platform disappears and everyone comes about, the talent will still always be there. Same with Boiler Room. There was a time when Boiler Room was the most important platform ever. That kind of subsided. Now Horse started. That subsided now. Now now thing will pop out. So it's not like the platforms are that important, really. You know, that's the really major thing. But that's what she's saying, right? So let's continue on. It says, and then we have vacuums in the industry where things once existed that could have been much valuable pillars of our community, but they were dismantled and never rebuilt. But then it's also hard when the platforms or our people themselves don't help to count closing themselves off by constructive criticism and don't take accountability for the act impulsively without a plan for the long term there's also a lot of deflection of wanting to escape the heat without addressing the legitimate grievances but on the other hand the apologies are never good enough <sighs> she's saying everything in it she's kind of occupying both sides of the argument without really saying anything but also i just feel like mostly she's just worried that another platform that could signal booster is kind of going to go away and it's going to affect her bottom line <laughs> really and truly something new will always be created but the voids are still there no one like honestly like <laughs> this is crazy i believe that social media has many virtues um especially during the times when widespread solidarity and the mobilization of anti-oppression movements is necessary but during these times it also becomes an uneasy place where it feels like the uh, the guillotine is hanging over people's heads um and the lost uh, so at least they make a mistake and they know um sorry at least they make a mistake and i know i'm not the only person who's sick of it so obviously some of the replies here aren't really feeling her 
Um, assuming platform created in 2011, 2019, sorry, that doesn't pay DJs. It's not exactly an indispensable culture institution. Exactly. The only Del Pao culture cancellation of note right now is one cancer people for the anti genocide. Exactly. And I want the Mutual Show to be pro Palestine. To be fair, that's, that, that point is not really, that's null and void. Cause I think everybody's, if you're going to be pro, if you're like a, if you're a founder and you're from Israel and stuff, like, it, it, it's understandable why you'd feel uncomfortable with people calling for the, you know, eradication of your country. I understand. I, I get it. I get why you, that would maybe touch your balls and shit. The problem that I have is just that, you know, if you enter into that fray, you have to allow both sides of the argument. You have to be okay with the uncomfortable thing that's going to make you feel. You can say what you want to say, but they have to say what they don't want to say. But I think the first two points are straight. The other one says, yeah, what's to be saved here? The fact that they have a YouTube reach, the fact that the bathroom is iconic, they weren't paying anyone and they were using the scene to build a brand for to make money. That's the thing that's really interesting about dance music, isn't it? There's a lot of like pay for play. There's a lot of people just like going to stations like that, not wanting to be paid just for the exposure. When I feel like really and truly all that work should be really put into cultivating and nurturing your own platform, which people don't do enough of. There's a lot of people just wanting to plug and play as opposed to building their own thing because as I've as I've noticed with kind of streaming my own DJ sets on my own channel, it's a slow burn. There were times when I was streaming to like one person, right? And you get like 100 views at the end of it. It can hurt your ego a bit, but I feel like you're, you should always resist the temptation to not to buy views because the temptation is always there. You just Google how to buy YouTube views. There's loads of services that can you can use for very cheap to make you feel somewhat great in yourself and give the impression that you're popular when really deep down you know you're not. But I feel like if you cultivate that audience from the ground up, like from having one viewer all the way to having 100, 1,000, 10,000, whatever, that's actually how you blow and how you have a sustainable you know fan base um, that can last for a long time. And you also go out there and you actually prove your worth by selling tickets because real people actually watch your streams as opposed to faking the funk and then when you get books for places you're not selling tickets and then venues realize oh shit you bought your views because i'm sure that's something that happens in the scene i'm sure people are getting booked because you know bookers have a million and one things on their plate maybe sometimes they're lazy but i just feel like they're just so busy there's no time to always kind of you know um double check everybody that's going to play and make sure their views are legit so you're booking somebody based on their variety on social media or maybe the high view count they have on youtube and then you're like oh okay come play at our club then you notice straight away the numbers that they had on social don't represent tickets because you've sold none and then when they go and play on the night you realize oh shit they're not as popular as they say they are because the room is half empty so i'm sure that happens often than not i'm sure it does but I still think the way to cut, the way to kind of counteract that is to actually build your audience off from the ground up and to not depend on the platforms. Obviously, it's a nice signal boost, but to do it on your own regard, that's a really big marker. Because I feel like I've seen like a lot of evidence of like botting of views or maybe the importance that platforms have on the reach of a video. Because you'll see a DJ do a live stream on one channel and get hundreds of thousands of views. Then they'll do an interview or another stream on another smaller channel and they'll get hundreds of views, right? So clearly there's a discrepancy there, which means that maybe your fans aren't following you everywhere because you don't really have that many fans and your views are botted or the platform is the one that's bringing you all the views you're not bringing the views to the platform kind of thing that could be a case uh, let's read another couple of replies here um okay but what um was it not them that literally cancelled sets because of the artist's views exactly we're not sure of platforms we don't need them new ones will inevitably come through if needed nobody needs to spend energy trying to make these establishments learn from their mistakes and make good on community shut it down now the whole like purpose you went to shut them down things a bit extreme um i feel like they're gonna shut themselves down anyway based on their own views you don't need to go out there you know calling for people to kind of lose their businesses and shit um but i just feel like like i said there's too much dependency in the dance music scene to kind of just use platforms and not cultivate your own audience or to kind of you know basically grow your own platform and i think that's the best way to go about things personally especially nowadays considering the plethora of pe fucking artists out there the only way to really separate um people really is by their reach it's sad. it's not really the fairest thing but that's the only way to do it really what the person say shackley solidarity doesn't count anymore and it's toxic when it has to do with where i aspire to play he <laughs> he yeah exactly that's true or when my pockets want to be lined another one says um it had to be it, it had a good and successful time if anything overhyped um time to shine a light on other platforms uh eg um radar radio went down other radio stations went up exactly no real reason to support problematic platforms um and enmity replaceable in perpetuity which i agree with another one says here uh same guy has been quite funny here uh people holding convictions and virtues as if this is some virtue signaling not them actually supporting an ongoing genocide and an apartheid state lol also the voice in this community babe this is just a dj show get a grip exactly 
Um, now this is just one of these. The protests are supposed to be disruptive. You guys are just libs, yeah. So um, it's fair to say the Juba lady's um, retort didn't really get a lot of support. I understand her concerns. I get it, um, but I think this isn't one of those like you know flash in the pan knee jerk cancellation things this is something affecting real people real lives have been lost real bloodshed children families just people in general dying unnecessarily so in the most brutal barbaric way possible and it's so far there's like no end in sight so i feel like people are in their right and again it's a thing that's been going on for many many years i've been their right to have very strong opinions about it and to also feel very strongly when the platforms that they support don't maybe hold the same opinions as they do now, should that be the way to go forward? Probably not. But again, I feel like it's an on the responsibility of the platform to decide what side you're on and decide whether you're going to get involved in the politics side or you're not. If you're not going to get involved, let people say what they want to say. If you are going to get involved, you also have to be comfortable with people disagreeing with your position or calling out with your shit. But it seems like people are afraid of both things. They're afraid of making a stance either way. Same with this girl. She kind of said both, she's kind of talking out both sides of her mouth, but fundamentally you can kind of get the feeling that she's just upset that a platform that she just got a, a look on, she's just probably getting started in the industry, probably starting to get her first proper real gigs and shit. And she's feeling like, oh, fuck, here we go again. Another platform kind of disappears and shit. And to be fair as well, when Horde started, there wasn't a lot of other streaming platforms that were doing bits, right? Kind of everyone kind of like went cool on Boiler Room. So maybe she saw them as like the saving grace because like I said before, the good thing they did in the beginning, now not so much because, you know, recently they had um, Seth Chucks on there who's not really an underground artist, you would say. But I think when they first started, they did a really good job of platforming a lot of what you would describe actually underground DJs, people that probably didn't get a lot of gigs or airtime anywhere else, kind of were able to sort of like signal boost themselves on their platform. Obviously, most of it came because, you know, the lockdown, no one really had anywhere to go. All the people that were based in Berlin had were basically stuck there. Um, that basically was more the reason why, but still, they did it anyway, and it kind of helped. So they did play a big role. But, you know, if people decide to vote with their feet because they're not comfortable with their political position, that's okay too. That's the way it kind of should be, really, in, in all shape and way, in all ways, shapes and form. To be honest, people should always vote with their feet in places they want to support or not support. So I definitely understand that position was going on forward. So, in my opinion, personally, hopefully, it kind of gets rectified on both sides of things. But it looks like it won't because I think a lot of people have made it magnet up on horror. I've seen people basically requesting for their sets to get taken down. I was checking the platform recently and I saw a lot of sets missing and shit. So clearly, there's been. Um, a reaction to um, how Hall has been um, acting and the stuff they've been saying and you know like I said that whole you know taking people's sets offline and stopping them midway telling them to take a piece of clothing you can't do that bro like you just can't do that so that's definitely not going to sit right with some people so I definitely understand people deciding you know what enough's enough we're not supporting them anymore I definitely understand that going forward